in this screencast we're going to show you how to start your very own computer in the cloud and for this screencast we're going to use currently the market leading cloud computing provider called amazon web services so called amazon elastic compute clouds or ec2 the, the two c's there make it ec2 so traditionally if you were going to go to this or you weren't involved in our class you would go to a page like this that you can pull up with uh, searching for AWS, Amazon EC2, and it would be the main sign in and signing into the console. We're not going to sign in this way, rather, we're going to go and use uh, our UC San Diego single sign on Active Directory account to sign into the link AWS ed.ucsd.edu. That'll take you to a list of your courses where you'll see your currently enrolled courses that have access to Amazon Web Services. I've got a couple of them listed here that I'm teaching at the minute. I'm going to click on one of these here and you'll have an option to uh, uh, to only go as a, as a student most likely. And that will take you here then to the main AWS console, which is also the place you would arrive if you just signed in with your own personal account uh, through the traditional mechanism. The reason we're doing this through our course sign up here and our, our UCSD sign up is we don't want to have to uh, sign up with our own uh, credit card details and things like that rather well, we're learning this and we're going to use the funds that are available for for this particular course so the, there's a lot of functionality here to control and uh, administer uh, various aspects of your uh, various computers in the cloud that we'll build in a minute we call these virtual machines because they're not real computer machines in the traditional sense, but rather they're off on a server in the cloud, which is nothing more than a big data center sitting um, uh, somewhere else around the country. And what we're going to focus on here is how to launch instances uh, and where these data centers are. You can check here. You can have them in uh, North Virginia, Ohio, Northern California, or Oregon, as I'm in currently. And there's also ones around the rest of the world, for example, if you really wanted to make one in Ireland, you, you could if you have permissions to do so. Now, I'm going to just go and click Launch Instances here. This will take me to uh, a page where I can start to figure out what kind of computer I want to build. And I can build a Mac computer, I can build a PC, various flavors of the so-called Linux operating system, a Unix-like operating system, like Red Hat and others here. I'm going to pick not Windows and not Mac, but I'm going to pick this very uh, common um, popular uh, Linux server called Ubuntu shown here and I'm going to pick the most recent version that they have available for this this at the time of recording here is 20.04 I'm going to make sure that the 64-bit so-called x86 type processor architecture rather than, uh, rather than the ARM processor is selected here and I'm going to click that so that's equivalent really to saying well if you get a new machine what kind of uh, operating system do you want on it. Now the second page that we get to here, and we'll note that we'll go through a few of these here, there's several steps to go through. This second step, choose instance type, this is really equivalent, if we, we thought of that first step there uh, as equivalent to picking the operating system, this is really equivalent to picking the hardware setup. And you can see here, you can scroll down with lots of different, what we call families of uh, EC2 instance types or virtual machines. And they start off from these tiny ones here, uh, many of which you can use for free. For example, they have one central processing unit, a vCPU, and a tiny amount of uh, memory or RAM here, all the way up to, and you can keep scrolling, and there's many others like 64 cores, 256 gigs of RAM, etc. We're going to pick one of these larger ones here. I'm going to uh, pick M5 here, extra large. This is 8. CPUs or eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM. This is a pretty you know, standard um, medium to, to getting on to slightly larger uh, si size of VM that you would typically use for doing traditional genomic style analysis, bioinformatics analysis. If you need more RAM, often RAM here is going to be the problem when you're dealing with larger data sets. Then there are others available here and I encourage you to play with those if you have needs to uh, to analyze large data sets or you want to run across more cores in parallel but for now i encourage you to pick at least start with pick this m5 instance called 
two dot extra large and then down the bottom here don't be tempted to just click on this review and launch just yet rather this next button will take you through the different steps and the, where you can say how many instances do you want to run so you can run as many as you need right if you want 10 computers to do 10 different things you can have 10 different computers here i would typically put you know if i was starting a, a machine a virtual machine for every student in the class i'd put the number of students here and i get a machine for each student for example let's leave that as one for now and we'll not worry about any of these other uh, options here we can come back to those later if we need to storage you can con configure extra storage on your uh, on your machine for for uh, hard drive we'll leave this as is there's also uh, low cost storage so called s3 storage that we'll talk a little bit about later and tags these are useful if you're going to start many many instances many many different virtual machines and you want to be able to administer them in a sensible way for example by uh, filtering down to those for a given project or whatever tag you set up again there's nothing to do here but in the next tab in number six here which we can get to by clicking the next button or going directly to number six we do need to actually do something so this is configuring the security for your new computer in the cloud if you will this really controls how you and others will access this computer now if you were doing this outside of our class and logged in the traditional way through the ec console there would be a couple of rules that we'd want to add here we could uh, add a rule for for example http traffic so-called web traffic and we could say make that accessible on port 80 from anywhere for example right, that would allow anyone to connect to a web server running on on this new computer you would maybe add another one for different ports that you might use for example for an RStudio server for instance like that I'm not going to do that in our case because we already have a security group set up with everything you need in it I'm going to go and actually select that select an existing security group and it's going to be this one here custom group for our particular class here this this one you can search for that or scroll down to find it for our particular class I'm going to select that and you'll see that it has various rules set up that will allow us SSH so secure shell HTTP access the kind of things that we need for doing the mathematics work that we're going to do in this session and then I'm going to click review and launch so there'll be a couple of messages here for example here it's saying that this instance is not eligible for a free tier usage that means you know, we will get charged for it not you in this particular case but us uh, that's fine this is the price you pay for using these machines in the in the cloud they're not necessarily free if you pick one with a, a reasonable amount of horsepower and, and ram and, and cpu it's also telling us that our security group settings are open to the world we actually need this because we're all you know, learning remotely and distributed all around the world so that's what this message is don't be alarmed by it in http 80 for web servers for example that's what we need and then the summary details about it so we've got eight cores 32 gigs you could do one last uh, edit of any of these things on this page edit instance details the storage attached to the tags and things again we're just going to leave this as is for now and click launch now this is an important kind of penultimate step here if you will and this is extra set of security measures that are in place that uh, we need to uh, to, to make and to actually use if we're going to connect and use this computer in the cloud so rather than using a just a traditional kind of username and password like you would uh, to access a regular um, server you know in your lab or in a data center somewhere on campus or something like that here we're going to use so-called key pairs to to do this a private key and a public key a pair that that kind of match where one is a bit like the lock and another is like the key that fits the lock we're going to make if you don't already ha have one and it's, if you're watching this video it's likely the first time we've done this so i'm going to say create a new key pair and then here when it's, it says key pair name i want you to type uh your your uh say, let's say bioinf underscore not bioinformatics we'll just keep it short bioinf underscore and your name whatever your name that you're happy with make sure you don't have any spaces notice i'm using an underscore here no spaces or no funny characters in this key pair name remember a space 
a file name here in the Unix world is like a, a space in your soul. Just don't do it. It'll come back to haunt you later. You just make this uh, name one word, something that you will remember, and then download it. Okay, so here I'm going to download this uh, keeper. And I've already got this one, so we'll use the same. We'll use the same one here. Choose an existing keeper. I can go and find that in this long list of of uh, keepers. If you have, if you haven't already done this before, somewhere in here there's a, a BIO. There's several keeper so if we're going to use an existing one but you would download it and acknowledge that you have access to it if you're creating this the first time launch the instance and your instance is now launching and it'll take you know, a couple of minutes two to maybe maximum five minutes if uh, traffic is particularly uh, busy in the, in the intertubes for this and there's a lot of load on the on the, on the, the launching system here but what we're going to do here is uh, then uh, you can view a launch log you can see here this is some help guides about how to connect i want you to note down or even copy this little identifier this is the identifier for your new computer in the cloud i'm going to go click on that it'll show me the instance when it starts to run it'll be listed here as running and that's uh, the details of the instant type so the stage it's out again now at this stage i can click on this instance id it'll show me some details about it there's a uh, some things as a student you don't have access to at the minute so we get these little red text uh, error messages that's uh, not going to affect the functioning of our instance at this time but what we can do once we've clicked on this instance summary page we can click connect and it'll tell us here how to there's, there's various other options here but we're going to click keep on the ssh client we're going to use the secure shell the key that you downloaded that should be in your downloads folder we're going to use this command in your local computer on your favorite terminal application for example an iterm or something like that you can use this shamod to change the mode of this key file that you downloaded to uh, something that's a little bit more restrictive to mean it's not viewable by other users of your computer that's required here to make it a little bit more secure so only you have the key for this lock that's on your remote computer and then once you've done that we can use that key file the bioinfari uh, to uh, pass to the ssh command here if you can see this minus i to tell it where the key file is and then the username on this computer is uh, ubuntu that's the type of operating system we're running and then this is the unique um, address of my computer on the internet just like bbc.co.uk or uh, our class website or whatever it is this is the the address to connect to it so we're going to use that to not to actually go and log in to our computer let me show you that in a second i'm going to bring up the, the terminal application here and i'll cd to my let me clear this off. And I'm going to cd to my downloads folder. And I'm going to shamod change mode 400 of the, I'll make this font a little bigger here, of the, the key file. So I'm pushing tab to auto complete. That changes the, the permissions on that. And then I can do my ssh minus i. The, key file itself and i'm using tab again and then ubuntu at the name of that uh, computer i don't remember what it is i'm not going to try and remember what it is i'm going to copy it from that website here and paste it in and once i do that and push return it'll ask me you've never connected to this before are you sure you really want to connect this machine maybe you're doing this by accident and don't want to connect to a remote machine in this case it's not by accident we know what we're doing and we're going to say yes we do want to connect we say yes and then we're in so you notice that my prompt has changed here it says ubuntu at this address 
I can ask who am I? Seems existential, but this will tell me what my username is. I can ask where I am, PWD, and Ubuntu. I can look at the processes that are running on this computer. There are none, no, none root processes. I'm using top here to view the active processes. I can push Q to get out of it. I can list my contents. There's none, but I'm ready now to go and make a directory for my work. CD into that directory. Oh, I can list and see that there's a directory called work here. CD into work, and I'm ready to go do my stuff, which we'll cover in our next video in this section. How to update the software on this uh, remote machine in the cloud, how to actually start doing our bathematics work here in the remote environment. See you in the next one. Bye.